And let's say, for the sake of argument, that it can be developed into a really practical energy source. Mm -hmm. Maybe not tomorrow, but maybe in a couple of years. What's the consequence? Well, there's two immediate consequences. One is that it would be taken up by China and the third world very, very quickly because it's not competing with very much and they really need the energy. They're really desperate for it. They have very few rules and regulations in place so that they don't have a big bureaucratic hurdle. But simultaneously, the coal companies, the energy distribution companies in the United States come to the realization that, hey, wait a minute, that energy source is going to take over and pretty soon we're not going to need any coal, we're not going to need any transmission lines, we're not going to need any nuclear plants. And the bankers say, hey, no, wait a minute, I, you, you owe me money for 30 years, in 10 years you're not going to be able to pay me back, I want my money today. Or I'm not going to give you another loan, a bridge loan, to, to you know, to pay off the first one and, and, and get the next one. In other words, the economics of energy production in the United States starts to crumble. That would be huge. It would make the, the, the collapse of the mortgage market look trivial. So there's a tremendous threat to the economic system in the United States and, and in Europe to a lesser extent that this represents. So what, what do they do? Well, they do what they have been doing up to this time. Do everything they can to slow it down. I mean, the interest, you see, is in Japan, it's in India, it's in China. Not by accident. It's not in the United States. It's there because they want that. They need it, and it does not compete with their present infrastructure. Here it does. It doesn't by accident that you don't have very much going on in the United States, you don't have very much going on in Europe. You have it in Italy, yeah, Italy desperately needs this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, then Greece gets involved, well you betcha, I mean they really have a self-interest to see this work. Cold fusion, I could have this house run off electricity being generated by something in the basement that would have to be uh, restocked maybe every 10 years and disconnect completely from the, from the wires that come in. So I don't need any of those wires. I don't need the transmission lines, I don't need the transformers, I don't need the whole infrastructure that controls that. Right. So, so you wouldn't put anything in the nuclear plant because that is part of that system. But the transition will be hell. It's the transition that, that, that you have to worry about. I mean, when you went from, uh, let's say, burning uh, whale oil to natural gas, eh, maybe one thousandth of a percent of the economy was involved. You know, when, when you went from, let's say, um, horse and buggy to automobiles, that was over a fairly long period of time. and. The automobiles weren't competing with anything else. They just, they just got rid of the horses. And that was trivial percent of the total economy. If you get rid of the energy industry, that's a huge chunk of the economy. You get rid of all the wires, you get rid of the pipelines, you get rid of all the trucks that carry the gasoline, you get rid of the gasoline stations, you get rid of the mines, mining coal, you get rid of all the coal that's transported by, by rail, I mean, you get rid of such a huge chunk, employing millions of people, that that would have a huge effect on the economy in the transition. Now, of course, once that transition's over with, all these out, things have gone bankrupt and people have starved and other, then they've come back and found other jobs and now you have really cheap energy, you have clean energy, the environment's cleaner, you have all the energy you need to uh, undo the rise of the sea level, you build your new cities using this technology, you don't need wires between them, you don't have to worry about terrorists attacking a part of the system because it's, it's, it's unitized, it's not general. 
And, and so now you have a much better world. But getting there is not going to be easy. But when you then ask, well, what is going to happen? The first thing that's going to happen is that it's going to be a threat to coal. It's not going to be a threat to oil. See, oil is mostly used for transportation. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but coal is mostly used for general energy. To create steam. To create steam, to create electricity. And then the electricity is then used for all kinds of other things. Uh, for manufacturing, you know, home heating, lighting, and all the rest of it. But it won't have much effect on the price of oil. Because oil, mm -hmm. it's not going to take the place, it's not going to be used in transportation. Mm -hmm. Now, gradually as coal is phased out and the electricity becomes cheap and available from this coal fusion, then that, that makes electric cars practical, it makes electric trains more practical, it makes you know, the use of electricity for transport, but you can't use that in airplanes, so you still have to have fuel of this kind for airplanes. Mm -hmm. And so the price of oil will go down because the demand goes down, so then that makes the use of it more attractive, and that's fine. But it starts phasing out coal. That's the place where the, the first step will happen. Well, that means all that infrastructure will have to go. And that's a significant infrastructure. Now, how do you phase that out and phase in coal fusion in a rational way that doesn't crash the system? Well, that's what they're trying to figure out. Right. Now, the way it'll work, I think, the only way you can make a transition work is that you say to the people who are selling these things, okay, uh, you're not allowed to sell to homeowners uh, unless you meet certain qualifications. In other words, the, the, the regulators get involved. Just like they're not allowed to sell, you know, a furnace to a home unless it's been checked out by the underwriters. And, and so this would be the same way. But, and it would take them forever to give you permission. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the coal plants are saying, okay, we're cutting back. We're starting to pay off our loans. Uh, we're starting to lay off people. And we're not building any more of these plants. We're not creating any more uh, things that will have to go away. And, and then it's slowly, people retire, people are fired, plants wear out anyway, and it just sort of drifts away. Hopefully, they balance. I mean, you don't want it to drift away so fast that you run out of power before you've got these things installed in homes. But anyway, th there will be this balance coming online. Meanwhile, China will say, oh, we don't care about this, we're just going to build these things as fast as we can. And so they pr start producing power without having to buy oil, without having to buy coal. And they start manufacturing things half the price that they're presently um, charging us. And now we start losing jobs because more and more stuff starts to be made in China. All right. That's another little aspect of this that we have to deal with. But that's already happening. This will just be accelerated by that process. And now you can go to Africa where there's even people that are even poorer and say, okay, we'll set up a plant here for you. You don't have any power anywhere close by. You don't have any water close by. We'll set up a cold fusion energy generator that will pump water from wells and that will supply your factory and all the people here. And now you set up a city completely independent of the rest of the world. So the rest of the world starts competing with the first world much more effectively. Our standard of living goes down, their standard of living goes up. Okay, the world starts to even out. On the average, these people are better off, except we're not. But we're not going to be anyway for other reasons. Mm -hmm. All right, so th there's, there's always this trade-off. It depends on whose advantage you're looking at. Hmm. And, in the long run, once you get through all this transition, it'll be better for everybody. It's just going to be a little bit of a problem getting through the transition.
enjoy yourself. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy promoting it, enjoy uh, getting involved with it, enjoy writing a book, enjoy interviewing, enjoy just the process. I mean, that's all you...